country in here. Welcome back to the Be That Create That social channel. Whether you are on our podcast, YouTube, or in our Female Leader Headquarters group, welcome, welcome. I'm so excited to bring you another one of the interviews of some of these wonderful women that I am meeting through socials that are making an impact every day. We talk to coaches, we've talked to video content creators, we have talked to stay-at-home moms that have Etsy shops. We cover it all. There is a way to make a difference and make an impact in every moment of our day while we're creating that leadership lifestyle. And today is no different. I'm bringing Heather Stewart on with us today. And I'm going to bring her on so that she can introduce herself. Hello, hello again. Hello, how are you? Very good. I love that you call yourself a real life coach. Right? <laughs> it's, it's so interesting, the land of coaching, when you enter it and you think, what do I do and how do I do it? And I started calling myself a real life coach because I was coaching these clients who say, some of them said to me, um, well, I had this coach before, but it was too overwhelming. There were too many things to do. So I said, well, it has to fit into your real life. And that's when I came up with the real life, more life, less to do's. That's what I tell people. Yes. Right. Um, so when you think about your journey to become an entrepreneur, become a coach, um, you know, tell us a little bit about your background, Heather, and, and how you got to this passion point that you're at now. Oh, my goodness. It's uh, it's been an interesting ride. I'll give you the short version. So <laughs> I spent 50 my first career, I spent 15 years as a CPA. I was a corporate finance executive and I knew I mean, I was good at it. Obviously, I kept getting promoted, but I would figure stuff out and then I would get bored and mm -hmm. I just didn't really love what I did. And then um, I it's to, to shorten the story. I started teaching yoga after work as stress relief. I had originally started taking it and then I started teaching it. And one day I just said, you know, I need a change. So I actually quit my job. Um, and at the same time, I sold my house. I did all these crazy things. <laughs> and people thought I was mad. I actually had a friend who took me out for lunch because they were prepared to take me to the mental health facility because they thought I'd lost my mind because I quit my job. And I thought, there's something wow. wrong. There's something mm -hmm. wrong with that. So they obviously didn't have me committed. <laughs> so I, tra I went traveling in India. I came back. I continued teaching yoga. I opened my own yoga studio. I became a registered massage therapist. I'm up in Toronto in Canada. That takes mm -hmm. two years of education to mm -hmm. become a massage therapist here. And I was loving it because I was helping people. I knew that I wanted to help people and being in a big corp, people need corporate executives, people need corporate finance, but I needed to help people in a different way. Mm -hmm. So that's what led me into that kind of health and wellness space. And then five or six years ago, one of the um, therapists who was renting a space from me, I was helping her out. I'm like, do this, telling her all these things she could do because I still had that business mind. Um, she said, Heather, you need to teach this. And this light bulb went on. I went, oh my gosh, I can help people another way. So I went yes. and started coaching. And initially I was just business coaching. My idea was that I was going to business coach health and wellness people on how to run their business because- they're super good at what they do, right? But they, they struggle. They struggle with understanding how to run the business, how to be successful financially. So I was helping them. And as I was doing it, I realized that business is part of it, but it's also just their life. You can't pull just your business to the side and not have the rest of your life influence it. Yes. And, right? So... A year and a half-ish ago, oh, a little over a year and a half ago, I had a stroke. And I was lying in the hospital and I was thinking about this because I couldn't have visitors at the time because of COVID. Mm -hmm. And so I was alone and I couldn't really escape where I was. So I just kind of sat there quietly. And it came to me that what I needed to do was expand it. So, yes, you need your financial um, uh wellness to be in place and you need some kind of purpose some kind of occupation i have a client who's retired she calls it her beloved vocation something that gives that lights you up like you said you know what's your passion point mm -hmm. but there's all the other pieces around it that are going to influence it so 
sometimes I'm coaching people on their business and sometimes I'm coaching them on relationships or health mm -hmm. or any anything that falls in there. I actually have six categories that I, I you can't put yourself apart into pieces, but I break it into six just for mental, for people's mental clarity. So they're not overwhelmed. I do something similar to that. And because like you said, for me, it's the ripple effect. Right. If I am business coaching somebody and we're having a hard time with time management, it's also a relationship issue. And right. it's also a self-care issue. And it's yeah. also a, you know, so we do something similar where we rate ourselves on a one to a 10 in a few different categories. And then we talk about what's in the gap and then right. how can we move just that little bit. Um, and yes, it's important to niche down and become an expert, but I think it is all connected. And I think we can't avoid the fact that it's all connected and it's important to um, pay attention to that. It so is important. And it's, I mean, and sometimes I think people discount how important it is because I mean, my, I like, I have my podcast is called back to me and it was about um, you recognizing that I, I started it right after my stroke. <laughs> it was mm. recognizing that if you are empty and you are stressed out, I call them overwhelmed overachievers. If you're this person who just can't take another piece of anything and it's going to make you lose it, then you can't do all the other things that you want to do. So sometimes mm -hmm. it's just that self-care piece where you give yourself that permission to do something for you, take a downtime, take a quiet time, do whatever you need. It doesn't have to be a spa day. That's not everybody's um, jam, right? It's like mm -hmm. take that time and be whole and full in yourself. And that gives you that ripple effect that you talked about into all the other areas of your life, mm -hmm. right? So it's often that's where we start. It's that it's, it's because I specifically coach mainly women. You say it's hard to niche, but it's not hard to niche, right? Women overwhelmed, Let's make sure that you feel okay and not guilty taking care of yourself because that's going to help you do everything else that you want to do. Yes. So important. You know, uh, there was an analogy metaphor. I'm not sure which one I want to call it um, that somebody was like, if I have this full pitcher of water and I start to dump it into everybody else's cup, what am I left with? I'm left with an empty pitcher, but if I leave the pitcher standing and I have the cups all around and I pour into this full pitcher and it runs over and Whoa. fills everyone else's cup at the same time that mine is being filled. Right. We so often forget to fill our own. That's a good analogy. Right. And I know some people often use the uh, airplane analogy with the mask, you know, put your mask on first. Yeah. And I talked to a male coach that I know and he said, it doesn't make any sense. I said, of course it makes sense. If you pass out, who are you going to help? <laughs> That's one of those moments where we're just like male, female, brains are different. That's what happens. Move on. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> He's very lovely, but he explained to me how male and female brains were different. <laughs> Absolutely. In that one second. Yes. <laughs> so where do you feel like, you know, you've had a couple of these, these career pivots, adjustments, whatever. I'm not even going to say change because I feel like we take what we learn from each one of those positions and we just kind of add it on to what we're doing. A progression. Absolutely. So when you think about your vision, where do you feel like your vision is taking you um, in your service to your clients? What's, so my, what's yeah, my vision has been getting so, ex sometimes it's so expansive. I like, hold on, we're back here. Because I can, like, I've created this thing that I called the thriving life method, where mm -hmm. all of these pieces, it's almost like a choose your own adventure. So you come in to that program and we do the, that, that, like, what do you need right now? Yes. In this time right now, what do you need? We can talk, you can, we can talk about where you want to go, like hundred miles down the road, but where are we right now? I had that analogy of, you know, I'm in Toronto and I want to go down to L.A. Yes, I want to go to L.A., but first 
I have to drive over to the bridge to get across the border. And, you know, you have to plot out. I don't know if you're old enough to remember those CAA. CAA would give you the maps with the highlighter on it. I love yes. those. Yes. So one piece at a time, one piece at a time. When the girls and I, in December of 2020, we traveled to go see my dad in San Antonio, Texas. And I highlighted an atlas and I did post-it notes on the different states and things like that. So that my daughter at the time, I think she was nine. And I was like, no, this is how we're getting there. The, in, if our GPS doesn't work at some point on the phone, we read this map. And it was really, it was enlightening for me to be able to teach her, okay, what's the next road we're looking for? What exit are we at? Because it's just, it's an untaught skill. It is. And a total unrelated, I once uh, had got sent on a detour because there was an accident on the highway. I was the only one who had a map in my car. So I had pulled over to look at the map and all these cars started stopping and asking me where to go. So I said, everybody follow me. Everybody follow me. <laughs> True leadership right there. Yes. Right? But yeah, um, so it's like a choose your own adventure. We decide where you got to start and we yeah. start with that and you start making that progress. And then as we weave our way to your goal and yes. everybody's going to be different because everybody comes similar similarities but you're all in a different space. And I want everyone to get, I call it your thriving life. Like you want to get to your thriving life where you're not drained. You're not stressed. You're not wondering. I had a client say, is this all there is? I said, no, this isn't all there is. Cause she had ticked the boxes. I have yes. my house. I have my car. I have my kid. I have my husband. I have my dog. I said, well, but what makes you happy? And some people can't answer that. Yes. What sad. do you do after you tick the boxes? That's right. for sure. Um, well, speaking of tipping the boxes a little bit, ticking the boxes. So I do something called the 21 day morning rush challenge, where in our community, we talk a lot about morning routines and why they're important and how they help us be successful. And um, I would love for you to share, maybe you're not a morning person, but what is something that is a non-negotiable throughout your day that you feel like adds to your success? So I am not a morning person, but morning is relative. Morning is when you get up, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I have a morning routine that has been getting longer, but it's non-negotiable. And uh, it's probably in about 90 minutes now. And I know for moms, they would go, what? <laughs> Even when I was a corporate executive, there was no way that I could have done that. But it has evolved. So you don't have to start at 90 minutes. Yes. But um, I've been a meditator for probably 20 odd years, maybe mm -hmm. over 20 years. So I always, 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 that's my first thing I do before. I, actually, I get a cup of tea first. That's my, I have to have a cup of tea in the morning. And then I go to my cushion and I meditate. I used to meditate for 10 minutes when I first mm -hmm. started. Now I'm up to 45, but that's not better or worse. Mm -hmm. That's just where I've, I felt organically when I wanted something, wanted it to be longer. Mm -hmm. If I felt, if I feel, if I am rushed, sometimes I will only do 10 or 15 minutes because, you know, I have an obligation earlier than normal, but non-negotiable is my meditation on my mat and quiet time. Like I don't turn on phones, computers, nothing gets turned on because it's a distraction. If you turn on your phone and I've seen my husband do it, he'll come out, he'll turn on his phone and he has a morning routine. But if he does, if he turns on his phone first, he doesn't do it on, right? on, a, on a timely basis. He will do it. But then I'll, then I'll be tapping my watch going, we're late, honey. Uh, <laughs> you know? Isn't that interesting that, you know, I, I talk to my kids about this too, because I'll say, you know, something you have to think about is when you're watching the phone, you're in reaction mode. You're cutting all your creativity, all your imagination, all your ability to think for yourself. It's constantly telling you what to do. Yeah. Um, so trying to... I don't let them do screens or television until they're ready for the day. And I do the same thing for myself. It's like, no, you, you don't need to be involved with consuming information until you've taken some time to create for yourself um, so that you're still expanding that imagination. How old are your kids? 11 and eight. Have you read the book 24 six yet? I haven't. Oh my gosh. You must check out that book. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, it will, it's, it's super interesting, 
she has a lot of really good information there. It's about di um, digital detox a little bit. And mm -hmm. she takes one day a week where the whole family goes screen free. And she talks about the impact on kids, which because she's got kids as well. So absolutely. I highly recommend it. And I can't, I can't remember her name. No. That's okay. I will definitely look it up and I'll put it in the show notes for us. Yeah, well. for sure. Oh, absolutely. So um, lastly, you know, I've had you on hot seat now for, you know, 15 minutes. So I will ask you to, I know, I know I'm sweating because Michigan is like a sauna right now. So um, is Toronto. <laughs> um, but I would ask you, you know, if you had any questions for me, so I'll let you think about that for a second. If you had one question that you'd like to ask me, but while you're thinking of that, you know, where is it that you would want people to engage with your content, follow you, get to know you a little bit better now that you've been part of our party here? Right. So you can find everything you need to find me on my website, heatherstewart.coach. And it's a brand new website. You're welcome to try and break it. And if you do, please let me know. <laughs> please break it. Please, please break crash it. it. But you can find my Facebook links there, my Instagram, my podcast, um, there's a quiz there people can take. I do a, a quiz so people can say, I don't know where to start. If you just take that quiz, it'll tell you where to start with your wellness and it'll give you some ideas to start with. And yeah, so it's like, it's like self-contained magic there. Back mm -hmm. to me. I love Back that. Back to me. Yeah. Good. Podcasts changed my life. The first I one know. I ever listened to was um, Lori Harder's Earn Your Happy. Oh. And I was addicted from then on. It's like automobile university for me. I listen to podcasts or audiobooks. I feel like every moment that I can. I started with Amy Porterfield and Maria Forleo mm -hmm. and life has never been the same. <laughs> so, you know, one of the things I think about it when I'm putting content out there for this reason is you just never know. Lori Harder doesn't know who I am, but she changed my life. Right. You know, yeah. What is, here's my question for you. Yeah. What have you ever had a listener come back to you with something that has changed their life for them? Have you ever had that come from your podcast? You know, I don't ask very often for testimonials and things and reviews and things like that. However, I think that when I do get the messages that are like, this is exactly what I needed to hear today. I think that's why they mean the most to me. Yeah. Um, because even, you know, we did 21 day morning rush, maybe two, maybe a year and a half. Know that that ripple effect then is not only changing their life, but it's changing the lives of the people around them. Um, so yeah, I would say, man, it, it, it makes what you do feel even better. Yeah, I definitely, I love the, I don't read reviews, but I, I love the private notes that come from people. Yes. The funniest ones are when people said, I loved when you said this. And I think, I don't think I said that. <laughs> Hey, but that's what they heard. That's what they heard. And it was perfect. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Well, Heather, thank you so much for joining and sharing yourself with the community today and on our channels. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to do that. Very grateful for that. Thank you. Um, if you guys are going to get a hold of Heather, make sure that we go to heatherstewart.coach or we can also make sure that we check out her podcast back to me, which such an interesting story of how that started. So thank oh you. Oh my for goodness. Sharing that. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's all, right, all the places. Thank you so much. <laughs> all right, guys, we will see you on the next episode with the be that create that channel, whether you're following us through podcast, YouTube, or in the female leader headquarters, just remember that we are creating this life by design. So create that leadership lifestyle and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you.